Glory to Jesus Christ. I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. What a sorry situation. There's an invitation with your name on it. Beautifully prepared, handwritten, calligraphy, expensive paper maybe, and somebody's put a great deal of trouble to make this invitation for you, prepared a great banquet for you, and you receive the invitation, and you throw it away. Don't be those people who don't get to taste of the dinner. Imagine not being able to taste Christmas dinner. And yet the real danger is that all our preparations for Christmas, for the celebration, all the to-dos that never stop, don't let them get in the way of you tasting the real banquet that God is preparing for you. Don't let the earthly Christmas get in the way of the heavenly nativity in your hearts. Whereas Paul, writing to the Colossians, tells us, let Christ be all in all in you. That's how we get to taste the banquet. And yes, we're all getting ready. The church is ready. He can fix it up even now. We're getting ready. We're getting prepared. We're getting everything in order. And it looks fantastic. And a huge thank you to everybody who's been working so hard today. God bless them. Maybe they're at home resting. We'll pray for them. God bless them. One of the best Christmas meals I ever had was in a Ukrainian parish in inner city Winnipeg. And there was a big project block right next to the church. And it was some kind of special housing for senior citizens with special needs. And I don't know whose idea it was, but instead of doing the traditional invite the whole parish after the evening service, they decided that year to invite everybody from this project. And they put on a traditional Holy Supper for them. And it was the best Christmas dinner I've ever been to. Everybody had such a good time. And you could tell that they said, I made the year for the people that had been invited to it. Jesus in the gospel talks about the master inviting the poor, the blind, the crippled and the lame. And this whole story actually is in the context. We miss the verse. It's the last verse that we don't hear before the gospel reading begins. This whole parable comes in the context of Jesus saying, when you give a dinner, when you give a banquet, don't just invite your friends who can repay you. Don't invite those people that are just going to invite you back. Invite the poor, the blind, the cripple and the lame who can't repay you. And your reward will be up there. Your reward will be at the true banquet. And I don't know if any of us are going to have someone who is poor, blind, crippled or lame at our Christmas celebrations. I really hope that some of us do. But Jesus tells us, invite them. It's not too late to send out your own nicely decorated invitations. Because... The scriptures, the prayers of the church 
The ancient prophecies that we sing over and over again tell us he is about to be born to us. It has an invitation for us to be ready. And it's so easy to see the Lord's invitation to clean yourselves up, put your best clothes on, be ready, go to confession as one more thing that you've got to do because you're so sinful and you're so unclean and your life is such a mess and you really could do better. And it's not that at all. It's an invitation that the feast, the banquet is almost ready. So come on, it's going to be so good. Come on, leave the junk. Get ready, wash yourself and come. It's all for the joy that's set before us. And it's told that an an old monk who'd been a monk for years and years was dying in the monastery in the desert. And the monks that were gathered around his bedside to pray saw him revive. And he said, brothers, the angels came to take me. So I asked for a little more time that I might repent. And the brother said to him, Father, you have no need of repentance. And he said, truly, I don't even know if I've begun to repent. And then he said, I hear a voice. And the angels say, behold, the Lord says, bring me my son out of the desert. And immediately he went and the monks at the bedside saw the uncreated light as his soul departed and they knew that he was perfect. If you knew that the angels were coming for you, not the demons, the angels were coming for you, wouldn't you want to rejoice? Wouldn't you want to just have a couple of minutes to get yourself ready to give thanks like, thank God, I'm going to heaven. Thank God I can say goodbye to all my friends and my brothers and my sisters and I can get out of here. Thank God. Wouldn't you want to have a few minutes? Not because you're anticipating your doom or your judgment or your destruction, because you know you're going to the banquet. You're going to the celebration of eternal life. Wouldn't you want a few moments to prepare yourself? Well, we have a few moments to prepare ourselves. To prepare ourselves for the joy of the nativity. To let Christ be all in all in our lives. Because it will be a few moments, metaphorically speaking. A few moments that we're going to be there on Christmas Day. But you have a few moments left to get yourself ready. And maybe it's time to let undone some of the practical preparations and let them be undone, unless it's to invite someone who has no Christmas banquet to go to, in which case, get busy. God bless you. And remember that in the words of St. Athanasius, Oh, brothers and sisters, what a banquet this is. How great is the harmony and joy of those who eat at this heavenly table. They enjoy food that produces everlasting light. Who will be considered worthy to be in that group? Who is so blessed as to be called to and counted worthy of that divine feast? The invitations have our name on them. The invitation is come. There's so many invitations given in the Bible that start with that word, come. At the end of time, the spirit and the bride cry out for that ultimate banquet, that ultimate fulfillment of heaven and earth. The spirit and the bride cry out, come, even so, come Lord Jesus. And all of us are hungry for that coming. Come Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my world, into my family, into my parish, into my city, into my world. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. 
But I think there's an even better invitation to come that Jesus gave to us. And I'm sure he addresses it to each one of us as we prepare for Christmas. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Before the feast, find a bit of blessed rest for your souls and let Jesus Christ be all in all for you as you await his coming. Glory to Jesus Christ.